And when I was able to be with Pimp and see how he does his stage performance, the very first time we were with Pimp C and he had a show, he walked out on stage and he said, Jay-Z, Jay-Z don't ride on blades. And the music dropped. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. It's still the show. TV ain't got no temperature. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he's going to always say the show, so I definitely, I'm PMC no matter and what. And I'll still argue with somebody today that Atlanta's not the South because it's on East Coast time. Oh, you really go there? I go there because I support Pimp. I support Bun. It's what we do, you know? It might be a little cuckoo, but he had a logic to it. He's like, when you get off the plane, what time is it? Different time zone. What time is it? East Coast. Well, there you go. Wow. Right? It was just wow. one of those things that... That's crazy. You know, it was just what Pimp did. It was what Pimp... And Pimp taught so much. He was like, you know, you got... He was talking about females at the time. He was like... Wait a minute, stop right, right quick. Let me just say this. He say we all know Atlanta is the South. He did say that, so he you did. can't just stop right there. You know, he knew that because he said I used to live in Atlanta. So when you think about it, he really just trying to do what it take to whip you in shape. The biggest thing that I got out of that when he was having that argument was the fact of how people don't tell about the bad side. They always tell about you know the money, and they were celebrating so much back then. Everything was about the movement of the money. Sure. They didn't tell about when you got busted. And your mama had to go to that prison and all that good. We know about that. Well, Bun did say put everything in your mama's name. Put your cars in your crib and your mama's <laughs> mama name. Mama, he did. You know, he, he did. Trying to run all kind of game. So put your motherfucking cars in your crib and your mama's name. Let me tell you. And listen, that was a blueprint for my brother and myself. You know, we, we really got an education from... Uh, his exposure to the street life. And it was that it was that blueprint, you know. Um, and that was one of the things why we even started hustling and being in music in the first place. It was because of UGK. Like, the first studio we recorded out of was uh, Bernie and Shatiro in Missouri City. And the whole reason we recorded out of there is because this uh, young little African mother, and uh, she was a co-producer on Tell Me Something Good. Mm. And they recorded Tell Me Something Good. And when I told Bernard, hey, I know a studio where they recorded UGK at, we just went to just look to see if it was like a real deal thing. <laughs> like, y'all have a studio in Houston? Like, and it's not rap a lot? Like, where can I go and get in this place? Like, how do I get introduced to this lady named Bernie? Like, what's going on? And they ended up doing like South Park Mexican and a couple of other people that came up out of, you know, that area. But yeah, that was one of the whole reasons we even went to Bernie and Shatiro's was because they made a UGK record. Let's go wow. back to the Pimp C. I, I want to ask about this Pimp C, you meeting him the first time. Yeah, it was How, crazy. Like, like, where were y'all at? Let's go all so, the deep detail into that. Uh, I was on tour promoting the uh, album by prescription only. And my brother being my babysitter, AKA my manager, he gets a phone call from Mama Monroe. And she gets on the phone and she says, uh, you can call me mama, or you can call me Miss Monroe, but you can't call me by my first name. You're just not old enough, right? <laughs> you can't call me Wes. And that kind of set the tone with my brother. And she said, Chad wants to talk to your brother. Can he come by the condo? Wow. And at this time, he's telling me this. I think it's a prank call. I was like, all right, man, who's pulling your leg, right? Who's pulling your leg, right? So um, we get the directions and we go over to the condo and Miss Monroe opens the door and uh, we walk in the condo. Chad wasn't there. And she said, would y'all like to have a drink? Chad's on his way home. Uh, two and a half hours later, after being there, uh, we get a phone call. It's Chad. He's en route. But he wants me to go and look in his room. Right? And I'm like, okay, this is kind of like, okay, what's up with this? Walk upstairs. I go into his room. And he says, look on the side of my bed. No, he said, look on my bed. And I was like, man, I see some nice sheets. And he was like, well, look on the side of my bed. And it was my by prescription only CD. Wow. And he was like, man, that Boys in the Hood is my jam. Banging UGK front, back, and side to side. Because white boys in your hood are also <laughs> cool. And he was like, that's my jam. And he was like, I'll be there in 30 minutes. When he walked in the door, we half, you know, dabbed up, took me right upstairs. We smoked. And it was just a, how much can I learn from this guy? In this period of time because i don't know when i'm gonna be back in this situation wow. right? this is like meeting elvis to me like 
the holy ground has opened up, right? Wow. And from that night on, you know, if there was a show, he wanted us to ride in his limo. If there was a, a place that we were going to be at, we were going to be with him. If there was an opportunity to record a song, I would follow him studio to studio until I had my opportunity to, you know, work with him. And they were knocking out three songs a day because he was about to go get locked up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was my first experience of meeting Chad, wow. MC. And it was just, you know, I can only describe it as meeting, you know, they say, never meet your idols, never meet your idols. You know, they'll never measure up. Not only did Pimp C measure up, it was like a blessing because the guy I was emulating, which I truly was, because I didn't have my own voice then, uh, was Pimp C. I wanted to be like Pimp C and Bun B. Those were my musical idols. And when I was able to be with Pimp and see how he does his stage performance. The very first time we were with Pimp C and he had a show, he walked out on stage and he said, fuck Jay-Z, Jay-Z don't ride on blades. And the music dropped. What? I was just, I was like, whoa, like where are we? Like what's going on? Like, I'm like, you know, I'm the only white guy on stage now and I'm (laughs) off to the side. Where was y'all at? Uh, We was in Houston on Richmond. Um, I can't remember the name of the club. But it used to be an old strip club that turned into a club and back into a strip club back before. I can't remember the name. I'm sure my brother would know the name because it's probably close to a restaurant. But anyway, yeah, it, that happened. That and happened. what did you think? What did you say? What was your What was your mentality at that point? I was like, this is the greatest entertainer of my generation. What did the crowd say? What did- they were with him. Pimp, Pimp could walk into a room and it was his audience from the minute, from the word go. But what made him say that? It was, you know, the, uh, was it the Tupac thing? Was it? I, I, I can't, I can't, spec- to, I can't yeah. speculate on what Pimp's thoughts were, but I know there was some things where like Bun B had did his part of the verse already, okay. and they were waiting on Pimp C to do his part. And, and this was during that time. Yeah, and so I don't think that. Well, this was right after that time. He was he was actually performing. Uh, um, um, uh, big pimping and all that other stuff, but uh, there was some animosity between him and whether you know, hey, Jay Z don't fuck with Pac, like, and I really ride with Pac, and Pac's my guy. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard so them say it was, that. It was like, hey, listen, it, you know, he was gonna set the tone, and he was like, Jay Z don't ride on Blaze, and we were just like, whoa, what, like, what happened here? Like, where, like, where are we at? You know, but it was one of those things that he made that statement, and that's where he was, and that's where he stood at. Wow. Uh, but on the other hand, he has great relationships. Love with Jay, Jay. Yeah. love him. Like, from, rock with him. Like, from what I understood, Jay picked bun up in the Bentley, took him where he needed to go. They went and filmed, you know, on location. They did. They Chad did. went to Miami with his brand yeah, new band. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, the story goes, you know, he's wearing his mink and I'm like, man, it's hot as shit out here. What you going while you wearing a mink, man? TV ain't got no temperature. And that's that the, like that's Bill. the same pimp that said, fuck Jay Z, Jay Z don't ride on blades. Like I'm like, all right. He know? just was was you do you feel like he just was was uh like uh what do you feel like he was just he just expressed himself how we felt at the moment. I think that just comes part of being a great entertainer. You don't wear anything, you know, you don't hold anything close to the vest. You just let it all out there. And I think that's just what he did. He just let it out. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.